Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Carlson. I'm VP of Communications and President-Elect for the Society of Integrative Oncology. I also have the pleasure of being co-chair for our 2020 conference to be held in Baltimore, Maryland, October 16th to 18th. The theme of our conference this year is the science of living well with cancer. We're going to feature keynote speakers, invited symposia, oral abstracts, poster presentations, and workshops. We have a wide variety of attendees. So we like to see researchers, patient advocates, clinicians, students, a wide range of different people at the conference. And because everyone comes from a different background, it helps to have some tips on how to submit a good abstract. So tip one, follow the submission guidelines. It seems obvious, but even if you have a great idea and if you don't follow the format, it's hard for us to evaluate. Maximum word count is 300 words. That's about two thirds of a single space page. Now there's a couple of different types. So tip two is about research abstracts. If you're doing a research abstract, there's five sections, title, background, methods, results, and discussion. So the title should be descriptive. We have a couple of examples for you. The first is a randomized placebo-controlled trial of acupuncture to prevent radiation-induced xerostomia. So you can see in that title, it's very descriptive and it mentions the study design. Another example, is from a more observational study called Complementary Medicine Use and Cancer Screening Behavior Among U.S. Adults, a nationally representative survey. So again, it's descriptive and it includes the methodology. So in the next section is the background. We want a little bit of the rationale. Why is the study important? Why did you do it? And what's your objective? Next is the methods. So you elaborate on the design. For example, a two-center phase two randomized placebo-controlled trial, or it could be much simpler an observational study, a pre-post survey. So we have the design, we have the participants, so inclusion and exclusion criteria, what you actually did in terms of interventions, um, what your outcome measures are going to be, so listing the outcome measures and what statistical methods you're using. Then we go into the results. So here you're presenting the key results to your research questions. You may want to include key values and means, but that's not necessary. So summarize those results and you don't have to include everything that's going to be in the talk, but just the highlights. Finally, the discussion, you put it into context, what's the significance of the results and what might be your future directions. So those are your research abstracts. So we move to tip three, non-research. What are non-research? Those could be case series, it could be clinical observational studies, it could be educational around patient advocacy, a wide range of things fit in here. We do have one example. Um, from St. Luke's about a novel approach to informing patients about supportive oncology programs. So the headings are similar, a title, background. So the background is your rationale. Why did you do this? Why is this a problem? Or what was your approach addressing? The methods, the description, and the discussion. So you can change the headings if you need to. So for example, if you're doing a case report, you might want to change description to case history or something like that. Okay, tip four, four. If you're new to research, especially, remember the value of team science. So have a senior person, a mentor, uh, consult with you, look over the abstract before you submit it. Now the next thing, tip five, is how are we gonna review the abstracts? We need to keep this in mind as you're writing it. So we're looking at the novelty or the innovativeness of the research. Are you addressing a new interesting question or taking it further um, from previous research? The quality of the methods and the significance of the findings. Third is the clarity of the abstract. So we look at the English language, but we also look at things like typos and grammar. Finally, the relevance to the conference theme of living well with cancer. So we have a panel of reviewers. This is what they take into account when they judge your, your uh, submission. So finally, below the video, you'll find a bunch of links that can give you more information on writing a great abstract. I haven't addressed it, but we also have an example for workshop submissions and also for poster presentations that will be also uh, included on this page. So thank you. We hope you submit something to our conference and we look forward to seeing you in Baltimore.